If you're here watching this video, you probably love using Airtable, but you have this sneaking suspicion that by following some basic rules of database design, you could really level up your skills. So in this video, we will go over the three basic rules for making Airtable databases like a professional. All right, so we've got an example base here. This is for someone who does movie reviews and creates content about movies that they're posting online. And so we've got a list of all these movies here. We've got a release date of whatever content we're producing. Um, the status of where it's at, whether it's you know in progress, done, or or not started yet, and then we've got the content type, and there's three different content types: fun facts, a top three list, and reviews. And lastly, we have the outline of the actual content that we're going to produce. And if I were to summarize the three rules that we're going to talk about today, they really all fit under one main principle, which is that databases save you time by never making you repeat yourself. And so our first rule in achieving that goal is to never repeat field types. So in this list here, we you can see that we have a whole lot of dates and these dates go all the way, you know, a couple of years uh, ahead of where we are now. And it's just a lot of information. And on a daily basis or on a weekly basis, I don't want to see all this stuff. So I have some different options of how I can kind of get this out of the way. One option would be to create a new table for each month. So I could have January, February, March, April, and I could have all of my content um, in tabs by month. Would that be the right thing to do? No. And the reason is that I would actually have to just recreate this table over and over and over again. And then later on, if I wanted to summarize the data over multiple months, then I'd have to go in and copy and paste from all these different tables. Now I could also make separate tabs by content type, right? And I could have, you know, a fun facts tab and then a top three tab and a review tab, but that's again, doing the same thing. We're still going to have to recreate the name date outline when we could just have this whole long list. And so the answer, because we're using a database, we have views. So rather than do that, I have my one view here, right? This is my main view, but let's just say I want to create another view that just shows uh, this month's content. So I'm going to call this October, create new view, and then I'm going to filter, and I'm going to add a condition where the date is on or after October 1st. And let's see, on or before October 31st. And then voila, I just see what I want to see. This is my October view and then I can just keep on creating views for months. If I want to view by content type, then I'll create views by content type. So going back to our grid view here, which is unfiltered so we can see all of our information, that brings us to our second rule. We know that we don't want to repeat fields or columns. But the other thing that we don't want to repeat is whenever possible, when we're going down the list, down these rows here uh, and filling out information, if we end up filling out a lot of the same information over and over again, then we want to figure out how to stop duplicating information going down this way as well. So for example, I've got my outlines here and they all start with a basic template, right? Fun facts about the movie, um, review. And if I open this up, you know, it's got information about plot, acting, character development, etc. So I want to figure out a way that, you know, when I just click my single select here and I choose the top three list, that I have a nice outline that's already made for me that I can work from. So we'll accomplish that by creating a new table that is linked to this one. So if I open up content type here, I'm going to change it from a single select field type to uh, link to another record. And then I'm going to choose create new table here. Save. Yes, I want to convert it from a single select to uh, a linked record. And we'll skip that. And so now you can see that uh, we've got all these nice little blue boxes here that shows that we have um, changed it to a linked record. And if I go over here, it now created a table called content type, and we can see all of the reviews that are listed by content type, right? So all the fun facts, all the top three lists, all the reviews. And so because we've done that, what we can do now is create a new field for the templates. So. So this is going to be called templates. Uh, we'll make it a long text field, create. And then I'm going to go back to my, my main table here and copy these three templates. So that's fun facts, top three list, review. Yeah, that's the right order. So I can paste these right in here. 
And okay, so I've got these three templates here. And because we're linked to all these reviews, then we can use a lookup to pull that information into this sheet. So I'll create a new field here. And this field is going to be called template. And it's going to be a lookup field type. And so uh, it already is guessing that we want to pull from the content type table, since that's the only other table in our base. And then when I look in here, then I can find the templates that I want to look up and I hit create field. And now I can see that, you know, when I choose top three list here, it's going to give me the template for the top three reasons why X, et cetera. And let's say I want to change it get rid of this, it goes blank. And then if I go in and choose review, then I get my review here. And then when I want to create my outline, then I can copy this basic template over and then start customizing it for criminal minds. And so the second rule that we basically want to limit work in, um, you know, duplicating information as we are going down a column is very related to the first rule because we decided that actually in this case, it was worth making a new table because if we go over here, this template field is a different type of information. And we might want to add, you know, more attributes to each of these things. Like maybe the fun facts go up on Instagram and the review goes up on my blog. And so I want to add kind of info about the blog or have like a platform single select here. And so this is a different type of information that it wouldn't make sense to hold it in this document because you'd be writing the same thing over and over again. And the other thing that's really useful is if I want to change my template, I can just go in here and say, you know, whatever, I'm going to change this to top four reasons. So I ch change that to top four, change this to top four. And then if I go back into the reviews, I can see that this is up to date and this is now up to date. And so now I can copy and paste these in accurately. And now that you know these first two rules, I want to tie them together with a really cool tool that Airtable has available that's called the base schema extension. So if we open up our extensions here, we can add the base schema extension right here. So I'm gonna click add. And then that opens up, let me zoom out a little bit. And that opens up a schema, a diagram of our Airtable base. So we've got our two tables here, and then you can see these different connections between them. If I go into the settings here, you can see that we've got different kinds of relationships. And I'm actually just gonna untoggle everything but the first one, because this is really the most important. This is the linked record in between these two tables. And these can be dragged around, so we can drag them you know, on either side. And this schema allows us to look at the big picture of what's happening with our data. We've got our reviews here and then all the info that we're tracking about the reviews. And then we've got a content type and all the information we're tracking about content types. And then we know what the relationship is in between reviews and content type. And obviously, because this is just an example, this is a very simple base schema. But you can imagine when you get eight different tables and a bunch of different linked records and connections, that this can get a lot more complicated. I see the base schema being used mostly by very advanced users, but really this is something that everyone should use. If you were to open up your base schema at, at any time, you should be able to use it to immediately describe exactly how your base works to someone who is sitting next to you. And a good general rule of thumb with linked records is that we want to have as few as possible. They are probably the most powerful feature in Airtable, but when we end up with a whole lot of them, we can end up with this kind of nest and you'll see like this big spider web of connections in between tables to the point where you don't really know where your information is going. You've got like starting in one, then it's looked up in another one, and then that one's looked up in somewhere else. And so the base schema is a great tool for looking at it and really making sure that you have the most simple and logical layout for your base. So let's get back into our main base here. All right, our third and final rule deals with this column all the way on the left here. This is what's known as the primary field. And the important thing to know about the primary field is that this is what shows up on the other side of this link, right? So if I go into the content type, I can see Gray's Anatomy, The Flash, it's those words in that first column that this record is named as. And if I, so I look here, fun facts, top four list review, going back here, those are the words that you see here for this linked record. And that makes sense because in Airtable, each row here is called a record. It's a, its own package of information. And I can actually even expand it here 
and C, this is Family Guy, and this is all the stuff that's associated with Family Guy here. And because each of these records is its own unique package of information, the primary field must be a good description of that. And it also must be unique because we went into the content table and we had multiple reviews here called Gray's Anatomy. That could get really confusing. And you might have multiple ones because Gray's Anatomy is a TV show with hundreds of episodes. And so really, you know, if we're going to do a bunch of Gray's Anatomy reviews, then in our reviews table, we should maybe have some information about episodes or we can also tie it to a date. That's something I do pretty often is to add the date if there's a date field to the name. So if we were to do that, I would just go ahead and duplicate this field. And then this one we're gonna call ID. And so in our ID, we can make this a formula field. And so I'm gonna say date string and then put the date in here. And the, what the date string does is just formats the date in a simple format. And then I'm gonna use an ampersand, and then I'm going to reference the name, or it's called name copy since we made a copy. Hit save. And that's a little ugly. I gotta put a space in there too. And if I was really using this base, I'd make it more pretty than that. But you get the idea that now we have much more differentiation between these records. So to review our three rules, we want to limit creating duplicate fields by using views. We want to limit doing extra work going down by creating linked records. And lastly, when we are using linked records, we want to make sure to use unique values for our primary field here. If you follow these three rules and make good use of the base schema extension, you are going to create much better Airtable bases. So congratulations, you understand the most important principles of database design. To see these same principles in action with some other more advanced bases, check out these full build tutorials. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.